All right, let's go ahead and get started with uh, chemical reactions number two. In this podcast, you're going to get a lot of practice on writing and balancing reactions. You're also going to get um, a lot of practice with your uh, nomenclature as well. So here we have a visual um, representation, again, showing, in this case, the reaction of iron, solid iron, and gaseous oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. And I like this because it shows you um, how many of the individual atoms you have on the reactant side and how many there are on the product side. So you can kind of go through and look at this and uh, finish balancing it so you um, have the same number of oxygens on both sides. Okay, so our first example here, we have solid calcium carbonate is heated and it turns into solid calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So for your nomenclature here, we have calcium, which has a charge of plus two. Remember that periodic table, plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one, zip. Okay, so calcium carbonate, carbonate, polyatomic ion, is heated, so we're going to say put a delta over the yield sign. That means it, that it is heated. Heat is present. There is some energy put into the system to cause the reaction to occur, and it turns into solid calcium oxide. Okay, so superscript solid, solid, calcium plus 2, oxygen minus 2, and carbon dioxide gas. All right. So um, what I would do, I, you know, you just, you, you get a feel for this. And there's a number of different ways that, you know, little tricks you can use, and I'll teach you those. But essentially, I'm going to just start with calcium on one side. And there's one. Remember, we don't write the coefficient one, but it is there. One calcium here, one here. One carbon, one carbon. Three oxygen, one, two, three oxygen. Okay, so this reaction is already balanced. And I'm starting with this one so that you can see some reactions as written, they are balanced. You just kind of have to go through on an individual basis and, and look through that. Um, okay, so real quick here, let's look at this guy. Um, oxygen, so we have six, and if I put a coefficient of three there, that'll give me six oxygen here, and six here, four iron, four iron. This is now balanced. Next example, we have methane gas combines with oxygen in the presence of heat to yield carbon dioxide. Um, this reaction is the reaction in class. Anytime you're using a Bunsen burner, this reaction is occurring. So methane, and you'll learn some of these common organic compounds. Methane, gaseous methane, combines with oxygen, Brinkelhoff, gas in the presence of heat to yield carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Remember, this is a combustion reaction, or um, if you haven't picked up on that yet, it is. Um, it occurs at a much higher temperature. Um, actually, I meant to put G there. It occurs at a much higher temperature, so the water is in a gaseous state. All right, let's go ahead and balance this. Uh, carbon, one carbon, one carbon. Uh, four hydrogen, two hydrogen. I'm going to try this out. I'm going to put a coefficient of two in front of water. That gives me four. Now let me see my oxygen, two over here. And then I have one, two, three, four. So I have four oxygen on the product side. So if I place a coefficient of two in front of the oxygen, it balances the equation. All right, next one. 
And again, throughout all these, once you feel you have a, have the hang of it, pause the podcast, try it on your own, and then unpause it, and we'll see how you did. All right, so solid calcium combines with nitrogen gas. Nitrogen is one of our seven diatomic molecules to form solid calcium nitride. Calcium is a group two, carries a plus two oxidation state. Nitrogen, nitrogen is a minus three. Nitrogen needs to gain three electrons to fulfill the octet rule. So to balance that, we're going to need to make it six overall. So that means I'm going to need, oops, I'm going to need three of those and two of those. So that's balance. That's calcium nitride. That's an ionic compound. And so one calcium here, three here. So I'll try a three here. Worst case scenario, cross it out and change it. That's, that's the way I look at it. Um, nitrogen gas, we have two over here. We have two over here. So we are done. This is balanced. Example number four, potassium chlorate decomposes into potassium chloride and gaseous oxygen. Potassium chlorate, uh, one of your polyatomic ions. And that is a solid, and it decomposes into potassium chloride and, uh, oops, plus O2. Okay, so one potassium, one potassium, one chlorine, one chlorine, two oxygen, three oxygen. Anytime you have this, you guys, you have an odd number, you're going to have to make it even. In this case here, we're going to need to make this six. So I'm going to put a coefficient of two in front of potassium chlorate, which means I now need to add a coefficient of two in front of potassium chloride, which means I am going to finalize this by adding a three in front of the oxygen to give me six. Next example. Iron 3 oxide is mixed with sulfuric acid to yield iron 3 sulfate and water at 25 degrees Celsius. Let's see here. Iron 3. So the 3 is the charge of the cation. So this is iron 3 plus. Oxygen is minus 2, so I'm going to need to make them 6, which means I'm going to have 2 here, 3... Okay, and that is mixed with plus sulfuric acid. Eight is ick, eight is aus. This is sulfuric, ick, ick, ick. Oh, sulfate. So I need to basically add a couple hydrogen in front of my sulfate polyatomic, so the charge equals zero. All acids are aqueous to yield iron 3 sulfate. Okay, so iron 3 sulfate is a polyatomic, and I need to make them 6 plus liquid water. I know that because this gives me the temperature. And at 25 degrees Celsius, water is in a liquid state. All right, let's go through and balance this. Two irons, two irons. Now, when you're dealing with some of the polyatomics, it's really best to, you know, to keep them together like a group. So in this case here, we have three sulfates. So what if I try to put a coefficient of three in front of the sulfuric acid? Let's see what happens. Um, six hydrogen. Okay, I have two hydrogen here, so I'm going to try to put a three there to give me six. Now let me see what that does with our oxygen. Three oxygen and three oxygen. So it worked out in this case. And a lot of times you're going to find 
that it just works out. Once you get toward the end of balancing, things sort of fall into place. Again, if they don't, start over. Um, some students that say, I just can't get it balanced. I often tell them it's probably your nomenclature. Go back and check your nomenclature if you're having real issues getting a reaction balanced. Okay, two more examples in this podcast. So we have ammonium carbonate. Ammonium is a polyatomic ion with a positive charge. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion that carries a charge of minus two. Therefore, coefficient subscript. Ammonium again, plus one. I need two of them. Carbonate carries a minus two, so these charges now equal zero. Breaks down into ammonia gas. That's NH3. CO2. And we have three products, liquid water, H2. To oh, liquid because it's at room temperature. Okay, so for this one here, uh, let, let's just start with nitrogen. So two nitrogen, because you can see in this case here, ammonium is not on both sides, so we can't keep it together and try that, but we can certainly start with the nitrogen. We have two nitrogen here, so I'm going to put a two there. Um, let's see, that gives me eight hydrogen. So um, I have two compounds that contain hydrogen. I have ammonia. I already have six here and seven, eight. So far, so good. One carbon. Okay, one carbon. And three oxygen. Well, there's two oxygen and one carbon dioxide and one oxygen in water. So this is done by simply adding a coefficient of two in front of the ammonia. And our last example here, another um, cho or cha, these are our hydrocarbons that oftentimes combine, when combined with oxygen and with a little bit of energy input, give off a tremendous amount of energy, highly exothermic ethane. Ethane is an organic compound nomenclature. You'll probably learn this one as well. Okay, combines with oxygen gas to yield, in the presence of heat, to yield water and carbon dioxide. And you're probably starting, that's at a high temperature, so gaseous water, carbon dioxide, and, and you're, you're probably seeing a pattern here at this point with this type of reaction, this type of um, combustion reaction. All right, so here's how we do these. Start with your carbons. And these can be tricky, the combustion, but there's a little trick as well. Two carbon, okay? I'm going to try to put a two there. Two carbon, two carbon, six hydrogen. Okay, let me try to put a three. That gives me six hydrogen, two oxygen. Over here I have three and I have four, seven. I have seven. There, there's no way I can get seven oxygen here. So this leads to the Cho2 rule, Cho2. What we're going to do is we're going to go back through and we are going to double everything, okay? Let me see here. So I'm going to try doubling, and you could just cross these out as well. Either way, whatever works for you. Let me see here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go through and double everything now, and this is the Cho2 rule. I'm having issues, Carter. Bear with me on the editing. That's so weird.
Okay, I am back in business here. Okay, so we're going to go through and double everything. We saw it didn't work out um, when we went in with the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, because there is no way we could do seven oxygen. So we're going to use the CHO2 rule. We're going to double everything. So that gives me four carbons. I'm going to come over here and put a four here. Now we go on to the hydrogens. I have two times six. I have 12. I'm going to put a six here to give me 12. And now we are left with oxygen. Oxygens here. I have eight here. Four times two, and I have six. So I have 14 oxygen. That works because all we need to do is put a coefficient of seven in front of the oxygen, and that'll balance this combustion reaction. So in this podcast, you learned a little bit more about balancing chemical reactions using computational thinking and mathematics, and you're going to continue hopefully working on that problem set that was handed out to you. Thank you.